Hello and welcome back to the channel. So then, the death of the fruit machine possibly sounds a little bit overly dramatic as a video title, but I do not think it is an over-exaggeration. What I'm going to talk about in this video is, if not the complete death, but the very near extinction of the traditional fruit machine, the AWP on the Isle of Man. Uh, if the fruit machine were an animal, it would be, I mean, what's the shittest animal in the world? Uh, the panda. There you go. It, 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 if the fruit machine on the Isle of Man were an animal, it would be the panda. An animal so shit, you can't get them to shag each other. They can get pregnant for about two days in a year, and the one food that they eat, which is bamboo, their digestive system is singularly bad at actually digesting. So, it's kind of in that category. It's on the critically endangered list, and... Frankly, that's probably no bad thing. I've got nothing particularly against pandas, but I am not a big fan of what the fruit machine has become. Um, the AWP, the Amusement with Prize, which has been a travesty now for an awfully long time. I've said many times before that anything beyond the £15 jackpot for me just doesn't work. 25 quid, maybe just about, 35, 70 and then 100. Awful, terrible things. And what I think the Isle of Man demonstrates is that when there is an alternative, people will play the alternative and the traditional fruit machine will quite quickly fall out of favour. And that is where I think this is going to be relevant to the UK believe it's happening already with random machines and my feeling is that that is a process that is going to continue. So what I'm proposing here with this video is that the situation on the Isle of Man is going to be instructive as to where the fruit machine is going to end up in the UK and that is to say effectively extinct, just about hanging on by the skin of its teeth, but on the critically endangered list. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of on life support, and we're talking about turning off the machine. Now, my last three nights out have been in Douglas, Peel, and my hometown here of Ramsey. So what I'm going to do here is talk specifically about Ramsey, because this is the town that I have the most experience with. This was my old stomping ground back when I would be out playing fruit machines any and every opportunity that I got, either as a, a dreadful addict in the sort of 6, 8, 10 and early £15 era days, and then from the £15 mid to late £15 era onwards, when I was going out with the actual intention of making money. Either way, I have been playing in the pubs of Ramsey now for some 24 years. So I've got a lot of history in this town, know all the pubs and the history of them. And the way that I'm going to do this is basically take you round all the pubs or former pubs of Ramsey and just explain how the fruit machine over time has disappeared to the extent that there is now only one single AWP in the entire town and back in the day there would have been as many as maybe 20 or 25 fruit machines on site just in the t just in the pubs of this town at any given time now there is one but in some cases of course that's because the pub has disappeared, and, and that is not unique to the Isle of Man. An awful lot of pubs have closed down. Every time I go back to the UK, back to Manchester, my old towns of, of Radcliffe and Bury, I'm, I'm always struck by how many buildings that used to be pubs have either been knocked down and something else is now there, or the building itself has been repurposed into something else. So it's partly going to be the loss of pubs themselves but as much as anything it's going to be the pubs are still there 
machines are still there, but they're just not fruit machines. So, what we're going to do is get started. That that there, there's the um, just the overhead map, and that is the satellite view. Ramsey is a small town, population of about nine thousand people. Not a huge place. You you can walk from from one end to the other in ten minutes, if that. You know, you're never far away from the next place that you are going, and it made it very very good for doing like a tour of the pubs. When I used to go out to kind of play either as an addict or someone who was trying to make money. It was a great town for that because you were just never far away from the next place. You could do the whole thing on foot very, very painlessly. So we're going to start, and I've kind of, I've got a little snazzy 3D view. I've got all this prep here, there's a lot of groundwork gone into this one. We're going to start with this place here, and it is no longer a pub. This was the bridge, and we can see why it's called the bridge, because it's on the end of a bridge. This is, in Ramsey terms, this is actually a little bit off the beaten track, and it was, even though it's maybe three minutes walk away from the closest pub, it was one that you kind of had to make an effort to go to, because you would have to walk out of town to the bridge. There was a big sign there that said the bridge told you, you know, Oakles, Ales, that kind of thing. That was the front door. You had like a, a sort of lounge area there and a bar area on that side. And it was in that bar area that the... Google Maps is doing a weird things there. You can tell the cars come through more than once. Because if you on there, that was what you can see there, that they were resurfacing that road. And if you just click up, those barriers disappear. So the Google car must have been around at least uh, twice. But down that side there, that was where they had two fruit machines. And they always had two fruit machines in this pub. But I can only remember them getting as far as the £15 era. I can remember playing a you know, Barcrest Lucky Strike in there. The uh, Impulse Machine. Not Grid Runner. It's like Trailblazer, I think it was called. One of the early Impulse Machines that had kind of the big diamond shape for the board. A uh, number of £15 jackpot machines in there. But they didn't make it as far as a £25 jackpot era. And that was because the pub itself closed down. You can see there that the building, it is no longer a pub. And for an awful long time now, we must be talking 15 years or more, that got turned into apartments, no longer a pub. But it did have, in all fairness, that place did have two fruit machines right up until the time it closed down as a pub but that kind of makes sense because i would say that in the 15 pound era fruit machines were still okay and they would get played and i'm thinking back now that they would get played by by just casual players punters people who were that they were in the pub for a drink and they'd have a game on the machines or people who would kind of go out with, with, with a mind to play in the machines they weren't uh, you know pros they, they didn't necessarily know what they were doing but part of their night out was playing the fruit machines the 15 pound era still provided for that so not surprising that that pub still had two fruit machines right up until the end but the pub itself closed down so on the aerial view here that there you see where I'm, I'm wiggling my mouse point around that's where the bridge is and from there you would walk back into town and the closest pub then would be the central let's go to my funky donkey 3d view so you would walk into town there's the bridge you can see going in and we would get to the central pub in the center of ramsey and i'll go over there on street view as well so here is the central right in the middle of ramsey this has been a pub as far as i can tell forever there's actually quite a lot of photos of this square here because believe it or not this is part of the tt circuit the bikes come screaming down here they hang a right and go off up there so just to go to the satellite view they, they come down here there's the central on the corner they hang a right and then go screaming through there so over the years there have been a lot of photographers in this square because you get crowds here they put a load of barriers up and you get a load of crowds around here and there's been a lot of photos taken and these two buildings here have been pubs forever as far as i can see and the central here it's still a pub the bridge of course closed down the central is still a pub 
and this was always a two fruit machine pub from the very very first time i went in there in the six pound jackpot days they always had two fruit machines and it's always been a very pubby pub there's no food there's no kitchen there's nothing like that it is just a pub pub that's kind of your lounge area on that side that's more your kind of bar area they've, they've got a pool table around the back a little pool room and they always had two fruit machines now they have kind of jigged around the interior of the pub over the years so the fruit machines have moved around a little bit sometimes they've just had two of them together sometimes they've been in separate rooms but they always had two machines right through to the 70 pound era because i do remember playing in here they had a poker face and a rainbow riches both on the 70 pound jackpot at the same time but they weren't getting played uh, by then the fruit machine was in terminal decline over here they weren't really getting played and one of them got taken out the back end of the 70 pound era one of them got taken out they went down to one fruit machine that kind of clung on for a bit and they had a donned cops and robbers in there on a 70 pound jackpot but this this was after the 100 pound jackpot had come out in the uk we kept a lot of 70 pound jackpot machines on site over here well past the introduction of the 100 pound jackpot and i'm talking 12 18 months down the line of the 100 pound jackpot being introduced in the uk it was legal here and, and you could and there were a handful of 100 pound jackpot machines around but a lot of 70 pounders actually remained on site so th this place had a 70 pound jackpot fruit machine even though the 100 pound jackpot was available that survived for a little while but about ooh, god i'm going to say 18 months ago maybe two years ago that final fruit machine that they had succumbed and it was then replaced with a random 500 pound jackpot machine that is in there to this day it is a fortune 500 gold that came on site 18 months two years ago and it was has remained in there since so there are now no fruit machines in that pub there's just a single random 500 pound machine and then just over the road i mean i mean that that's a nice little you can literally just come out the side door in the central there and in the door there the swan and you and you to the next pub that that's the kind of a pub crawl that i can get down with the swan here again it's always been a pub and it was always a two fruit machine pub and i have a very very clear memory of coming in here with mrs degsy when i first came to the isle of man in 1994 and back at the time they had two fruit machines in fact we can probably have a look through the window they had two fruit machines in this room here they had one on that side there and one on that side there and i remember very very distinctly remember that they had a jpm terminator on a six pound jackpot i can't for the life of me remember what the other one is but for some reason i just remember them having a jpm terminator on a six pound jackpot in here and very much like the central they stuck with two machines all the way through the various jackpot eras over the years until and this is by the way you're going to notice a theme here right up until the 70 pound era now they had two fruit machines early on in the 70 pound days but that didn't and by the, by uh, that time by the way the fruit machines had migrated to the back room here where the pool table is they had one fruit machine against the wall here and one fruit machine against the back door here but then quite early on in the 70 pound era they went down to a single 70 pound jackpot fruit machine they had a donned i think they had a donned think red or whatever it's called in here they definitely had a bar crest take it or leave it a flicker which i did very very well out of i think they had a bell fruit gold rush you know the one with the video screen on it i think it's a clone of one of the dons but then very much like the central one day the, the fruit machine disappeared i can't remember what the last one they had in there was i've got to be honest with you but one day we went in there for a beer and instead of a fruit machine they had you have guessed it a random 500 pound jackpot machine cms haunted house it's against that back wall it's got it's got its back to that wall there 500 pound cms haunted house and that is still in there to this day we were in that pub just a couple of days ago in fact and it was 
a CMS haunted house in there. Does okay, like the Fortune 500 in there, it gets some play. It certainly did, or it certainly does, a lot better than the Fruit Machine did in there before it was finally retired. So that's another pub now that historically was always two Fruit Machines, now zero Fruit Machines and one random 500 pound jackpot machine now we shouldn't have to go far i think i can do this this is this is the tt circuit by the way still the bikes come howling up here up to may hill but we're going to go off the tt course and down here and this will give you an idea of just how close together all these pubs it was great if you just wanted to go out and play the machines it's absolutely fantastic because even if it was you know, if it was an awful day and the weather was dreadful and it was pissing it down you were just never that far away from the next pub and this one here the brit the britannia a, another building that has been a pub basically forever there are good historical photos of this i will see by the way if i can dig some photos out and overlay them a little bit like i did for the frenzy psycho cash beast video with the grand island hotel but this was a pub when i first came over here in 1994 me and mrs degsy went out for a few beers this was a pub and they had two fruit machines in this room to the right here i think they had a, a one of the ace watch for my hidden treasures and they had a Barcrest, the uh, the Adders and Ladders, both on the six pound jackpot, and another pub once again that always had two fruit machines all the way through the different jackpots, and another one that got as far as the seventy pound jackpot with two fruit machines on site. I definitely remember them having a poker face. It was actually exactly the same unit that they just moved from the central down the road into the Brit, and you could tell because there was a specific bit of damage on the centre reel over one of the oranges, which I'd got to know very well when the machine was down the road in the central. And yeah, that poker, the poker face disappeared from the central and appeared in the Britannic because it had exactly the same damage on that same bit of the middle reel. They had a poker face in here, and uh, I think it was a Bellfruit Gold Rush, probably the same unit that they were moving around from the Swan. However, during the seventy-pound era, this was when people had really stopped playing fruit machines in pubs they just weren't getting any casual play and it was when the random 500s were starting to turn up as well so this place went from two 70 pound jackpot fruit machines to one the very last one that i can remember being here was a really i think it was a donned double on a 70 pound jackpot and it looked like an old cabinet as well it looked like it had a bit of a hard life and been kicked around a bit they did have a donned double on a 70 pound jackpot in here so it went from two machines to one machine and then the pub closed down it the the brewery shut it down and it's no longer a pub looks like it's open here because we can see that the front door's open and i think we can actually see some people inside as well maybe closed down about 18 months two years ago which is a great shame because it was a really good pub but that has now it shut its doors best part of two years ago and is now empty it's for sale but it's empty i understand that the terms of the sale are that if you buy the building you can't use it as a public house so i think it's a great location for a pub and a well-run pub there should be able to do well but if you buy it i believe you can't run it as a pub which is a great shame so we can't blame fruit machines themselves for disappearing completely from this location because it did have one fruit machine left in it when it closed down but it went from two machines to one machine now the next one we're gonna in fact i think we can do because they're all so close together i think we can actually do it on street view here so let's just go out and this is a bit of a funny one this because this hasn't been a well not only has it not been a pub for an awfully long time the building itself hasn't been there for a long time either and i only ever came in this place a couple of times and it was called the iron pier now you can see why because that's where the pier is the pier is still there by the way it's been closed to the public for an awfully long time it was closed to the public when i first came here in 1994 because it had become unsafe it is in the process of actually being refurbished so hopefully we're going to be able to go out on that pier again in the not too distant future which would be great because i've never walked out on it now at the time 
There was a big... See those Victorian-style buildings there? These big Victorian buildings? They came all the way down to the end here, where they demolished everything and, and put these new uh, flats and apartments up. One of those buildings along here, and it was somewhere around here or here, it was like that, and it was called the Iron Pier. And it was honestly like somebody's house. Just imagine one of these buildings. But what they'd done is turned the ground floor into a sort of pub. But pub might just be stretching it a bit. It was like somebody had thrown a bar into their front room, chucked a few seats around, and said, right, I've got a pub now. And they put the sign up, said the Iron Pier. And you could go in. And the fruit machine, there was nowhere to put anything. The pool table kind of doubled up as a seat. So what they do is when the pool table wasn't being used, they put like a big uh, wood top on it and you could sit on it to, to provide extra seating. And there was nowhere to put the fruit machine either. So the fruit machine was, as you went in through the front door, you would hang a right to get into the pub itself. And they just stuck the fruit machine out in the hall. Now, I only ever went in there a couple of times. It was an, the awkwardest place to play because you were kind of blocking the hall if you were playing the fruit machine. So you were constantly having to get out of people's way if people were coming in and out. I remember very, very clearly playing an £8 big books in there, the JPM machine big books. Do you remember playing that in there on an £8 jackpot? I have no memories of ever playing a £10 jackpot machine in the Iron Pier. That building was there and that they were knocked down an awfully long time ago, although the pub did actually close before the demolition took place. So we certainly can't blame fruit machines for that one because I honestly think that place didn't even make it into the £10 era. It was just, it was a quirky little place anyway and it closed down a long time ago. It was also, it's a little bit like the bridge in that it was a bit of a hike to get to not that far away in in real terms but far enough away to kind of sometimes you just couldn't really be bothered to go out there and even if you did make the effort to go out there you, you were just kind of stuck in somebody's bloody front room anyway now the reason i've come down here is this used to be a pub up here was called it was the pub part of what they call the viking apart hotels and these windows here were part of a massive pool and games room and if i come round to the side i was just stood out there looking at the back windows and this is from the car park round the other side all of these round here are apartments so right the way around here are apartments and what used to be here, what you do is you go in there, there's stairs going up, and they take you up to the first floor here. And right the way along here was the Viking pub. And it had function rooms. It was a really big space. It took up the whole of this air, the frontage here. And it went all the way to the back of the building, to those back windows that I was just looking at. This place got to the £15 era. And they had three fruit machines in here at any given time. I remember Neptune's Treasure, Homer's Meltdown. They had the Ace Machine, Cash Ahoy in there. They had an emptyable Wild West. I do remember them having an emptyable Wild West in here, which I made the mistake while after a particularly... Um, how shall I put this? After a heavy weekend with various entertainments, I went out on a Monday to try and you know, get a few beers on to, to ease the bumps out. They had an empty bull Wild West in here, and I lost count of where I was up to. Was a little bit zonked and um, lost track of how much money was in the machine, how much I'd taken out, and I OU'd the bloody thing by accident. The one thing you should never do with an emptyable machine is actually IOU it because that's a big red flag that something's happened that's not supposed to be happening. There's no way that a £15 jackpot machine with a £125 hopper should empty. They actually paid, I didn't miss by much, it was like eight quid or something. I IOU'd it for like eight quid. They gave me the eight quid from behind the bar, but true enough, the next time I went in there, that emptyable Wild West had gone. And that was the last I ever saw of it. So again, we can't blame uh, we can't blame fruit machines themselves for that, because again, it was the pub that closed. And what we'll do from there is we should be able to just get round to uh, Saint Paul Square. And what we have here is the whoops, a daisy. 
is the Royal, the Royal George. Now, another building that has been a pub for as long as I, I any historic photos that you find of Ramsey, this has always been a pub. And I think it's always been called the Royal George as well. Traditionally, it has always been a two fruit machine pub. Again, going right back to the six pound era. Stuck with that right up to the 70 pound era. And fairly recently, they've had a donned Midas touch in there. They've had a red high-low silver. A few back-end £70 jackpot machines. And then they did actually, this is one of the very few places that got a £100 jackpot machine. In fact, I think it was a donned Midas touch that they had in here on a £100 jackpot. Then they went to a dual arrangement. They had one fruit machine on a hundred pound jackpot and they had one random 500 pounder they then went to two random machines for a short period of time they had two random machines and very unusually and this, this will be unique in this tale they actually got a normal fruit machine back in so they went from two randoms to a random and a fruit machine that's what prevails in there to this day they have currently got a cms haunted house there's loads of haunted houses around they must i think they've just um, got a cheap job lot from somewhere in the uk and, and cited them over here there's a haunted house and a swing my axe on a hundred pound jackpot you may have seen videos on the channel of me playing that exact same swing my axe which is still in there and has actually been on site now for about 15 months and it's still the same swing my axe on a 100 pound jackpot just round the corner here or just over the square is the commie now it was actually been when the car came round it wasn't actually a, an active pub you can see there there are no signs up it's been called various things over the years. It's been called the Commercial. It's been called the Ellen Vanin. It's been called the Mermaid. Uh, and it closes periodically and then opens up again. At that moment in time, uh, it was not open as a pub, as you can see there. Uh, again, another place that was always two fruit machines from those £6 jackpot days when I first came over here, right the way through to the £35 era. It got as far as the £35 era, then it went to one random machine and a £35 jackpot fruit machine, and I don't think they ever actually got a £70 jackpot machine in here, because some point at the back end of the £35 era, they went entirely to random machines, and they have gone in big, because they have got three random 500 pound jackpot machines and you see there it's not a massive pub it's just the downstairs you can't upstairs uh, above there is is um i think it's um i think it's housing for for the landlord landlady i think there's a flat up there and that sort of thing so the pub itself is just the ground floor there you can see it's not massive but they've still found space to tuck in three random 500 pound jackpot machines down there to give you an idea of, of how well these can do so there are no fruit machines now left in that pub there and just a little bit further down the quay let's see we are we are alongside the we're on the quay side here two places very close together part of kind of the same complex if you will let's see if we can get a view from a little bit further away you've got the mitre harbour bar so you're going through a door there there's a little ground floor area there but most of it is up here and you've got the schooner bar, which actually takes you underground to a, a pubby a nightclub might be stretching it a bit, but an underground drinking establishment kind of place, which again, on and off over the years, has, has been open or not open. I think it spent more time closed than open in my time, time here. The mitre itself once again it's very much a getting to be a bit familiar this now isn't it was always a two fruit machine pub right the way through to about the 25 pound jackpot era this got as far as the 25 pound era i do remember playing an upgraded austin powers in here on a 25 pound jackpot but they got in 
quite early into the random 500s. You've got to remember that the random 500s have been legal ever since they were first introduced in the UK. So whenever they turned up in the UK, which was, I think it was about 2004-ish, 2003-2004-2005, they were available to be sighted on the Isle of Man, but they just never bothered. The Royal over here, that actually got, for a very brief period of time, that got a random £500 machine in the £25 jackpot era of the fruit machine. The random 500 turned up, lasted about a month, and was taken off site, and they went back to two fruit machines. Because if you think about it, in the £25 jackpot days, you were 30p a go with a £25 jackpot and the chance of a repeat. And then these random 500s turned up on £2 a go, which was a fairly ferocious proposition. And they have trialled them. Over the years, they've popped up maybe one here or there and they just didn't seem to catch on and they were taken away again it was only in the 35 pound era that the two pound play 500 pound jackpot machine started to gain some sort of traction and you can think about it that's because fruit machines were getting shitter and shitter People who didn't know what they were doing were finding dead machine after dead machine. It was getting harder to get a win or get on the board. If a machine was being done, you were never going to get a jackpot out of it as a casual punter. So it's like they kept trying with the random 500s. They just kept testing the water to see when they would start gaining traction. And they started gaining a little bit of traction in the £35 jackpot days. The mitre here went in pretty big early on, and they got three of them. There are three random £500 jackpot machines in there. They persist to this day. They're all in a little foyer area down there. You don't even have to go up to the, you don't have to even go have to go upstairs to the bar, which is there to buy a drink. You can just go in. You can just walk in off the street and play the machines, which some people do. There are three. 500 pound jackpot machines in there what's downstairs in the schooner at the moment i couldn't tell you uh, even when it's open we never go down it's a bit sort of young and nightclubby and i'm old and not nightclubby and same as my friends last machine i can remember playing down there was a 25 pound hellraiser i could not i honestly couldn't tell you what's down there now but the mitre there is a really good example of a pub. The pub's still going strong. The, the pub's still popular. It gets busy in there. But they have no fruit machines. They just have random £500 jackpot machines. A little bit further along and not very far to go all to the traff. Now, the traff is a bit of a funny one. That was a two fruit machine location forever right the way through to the £25 jackpot days. It got as far as £25 jackpot. I do remember playing a Vivid in there. It's like a uh, clone of Cliffhanger. Can't remember the name of it. It had a kind of fishing theme. So they got to the £25 era with two fruit machines, but they didn't like having them. I mean, the barman or the bar staffer and the landlord, they were always grumpy about them, and they had them. By default, they were always turned off. So what you, what you had to do, you had to go in, you sort of buy a pint of Ockles, please. Oh, and could you turn the machines on, please? Oh, meh. And they kind of walk out from behind the bar, turn the two machines on, and you could play them. And then the second you'd finished playing and walked away from the machine, they'd come out from behind the bar and turn them off again. That was how much they liked having the things in there. So, of course, one day, of course, the inevitable happened. Walked in. Hi there, uh, can I get a pint of Ockles, please? Yeah, there you go, a £2.20, whatever it was at the time. Oh, and could you uh, turn the machines on, please? They're broken. Oh, uh, both of them? Yeah. Thanks. Now, mobile phones were a thing there, but like old green screen Nokias. So you've just bought a pint. You haven't got anything else with you to do. You haven't got a magazine or anything like that. And you've got a green screen Nokia phone. They had to just sit down and play Snake for ten minutes while I drank my pint. So they never liked the machines in there. And they got rid of them in the £25 era. They just binned them off. They went from two £25 jackpot machines to zero. Didn't replace them with anything else. So there are actually no machines at all in the trap. Now, it's a good pub. 
really good beer, but there are no machines in there. A little bit further down to the Stanley, on the corner here, just over from the uh, swing bridge there, some ancient Victorian swing bridge that still works, it's in full working order. What it can do is swing open to let boats in and out, because obviously they can't get under that when, when the tide's in. Now the Stanley started off as a two fruit machine location. It had two fruit machines, six pound, eight pound, and I think 10 pound. Then the 10 pound era, they went to one fruit machine, which was through in the bar area here. That's your pool room and, and sort of games room jukebox through there. And to this, well, up until very recently, they had one fruit machine. So that's 10 pound, 15, 25, 35, 70. Right the way through to the 70 pound jackpot era, they've had a donned lucky streak in there i think it's called of late they had a donned gold and they also had a empire's holy grail which is the only place i've ever seen one which is an awful machine but then just in the last oh god nine months or so they got rid of the fruit machine i think the last one they had was that holy grail and it is now a random 500 in there it is a fortune 500 gold another one not the same one that they've got down the central because these are both on location at the same time so in there and i, I know for a fact because i was in there just the other week there is a fortune 500 gold in the stanley no fruit machines that's gone from two fruit machines to one fruit machine to no fruit machines Coming into Parliament Street here is the Plough. That's once again another building that has been a pub forever and ever and ever. Started off as two fruit machines. Six pound days was, was the first time I came to the Isle of Man. Two fruit machines through six pound, eight pound. I think by the ten pound era or fifteen pound era, they'd gone down to a single machine, which was in this side of the pub here, and they kept that one machine right up until the 70 pound era i definitely remember playing the electro coins you know the one with the, with the wind stepper and the real skill they had a bar crest take it or leave it in here which was a very very rude earner while it was on site do you remember over tt this place is absolutely rammed during tt full of visiting bikers the, the machine got a lot of play i was going back every day to do the take it or leave it in there there was some rude cash to be had however back end of the 70 pound era the fruit machine just disappeared and got replaced by a random 500 pound machine and that remains in that pub to this day still a pub still there still quite a popular pub as well gets busy in there no fruit machines they've just got a random 500 pound machine in there now just over the road it's Bar Logo. It's had a few different names over the years. It's currently called Bar Logo and has been for a while. Another location that was two fruit machines for the longest time. That was two fruit machines. And I think they got to the £35 jackpot era with two fruit machines. Then in the £35 jackpot era, they went to one random and one fruit machine. That persisted into the £70 era because they definitely had a £70 crazy chair in there and a random 500 pound jackpot machine and then oh god maybe two two and a half years ago maybe even longer than that they lost the final fruit machine and there are now two random 500 pound machines in there now once again another pub that has gone from two fruit machines or one fruit machine down to zero fruit machines and two random 500 pounders and if we carry on down the street here, and this is to a place for some reason that I've never actually been in. Because it, I mean, it's the RAOB club, so you do have to be a member to go in, and I've just never joined. I think you can get signed in by a member, but it's just one of those things that I've just I've never bothered to do. I do actually know people who are members of it, but I, I'm, I'm not doing very well here. But there you are, RAOB. You can't even see the fecking sign. There we are, yeah, RAOB club never been in there they did historically have club machines in there i think but i can tell you for a fact what's in there now because you can see them through that window they have got two random 500 pound jackpot machines and they persist to this day there are two random 
machines in there, another location that does not have fruit machines. And just one more, this is a bit of an outlier because this is a bowling alley. You can see here it was saying coming soon when the Google car came round. It is now a bowling alley and has been for a few years. And initially upon opening they actually had several fruit machines. They had five or six 70 pound jackpot fruit machines one of which was a can you dig it which was a very good earner i heard second hand from somebody else that the fruit machines in there just weren't making any money that would certainly um time with my experience on the can you dig it because towards the end you were having to leave that thing three weeks for it to get ready again that tells you how little play it was it was getting that you could you, you could leave it two or three weeks and it was still making hard work of trapping it for a jackpot there is of course a video about can you dig it or rather its clone the empire strikes back earlier on in the channel they started off with six machines they quickly went down to three because obviously they're having to pay licenses on the machines and they just weren't getting played enough to justify the licenses they went down to three then they got like a sit down party time arena and two randoms and then they got rid of the machines all together. There are now some video games in there and, and air hockey and that kind of thing. But there are actually no fruit machines or random machines in there now at all. They just didn't seem to be able to make much of an income in that place at all. So that is basically about it. That's all the pubs and, and machine locations in Ramsey that I can recall. So what is the point of this video? Well... It says to me that there is still a market for machines in pubs because of all the pubs that are open in Ramsey, I appreciate that a few of them have closed down, but of all the pubs that are open in Ramsey, nearly all of them have still got machines. You've got outliers such as the Traff, which don't have any machines at all, but basically every single pub that is still open in Ramsey has one, two or three random 500 pound jackpot machines and there is just one single awp left out of all those pubs all those machines there is one fruit machine which is that 100 pound swing my axe and that is repeated in every sort of town that you go out you go out around the pubs of douglas it's exactly the same it's almost all random machines you go out in Peel, we had, we had a, a greater sort of afternoon and evening out in Peel a couple of months ago, went round pretty much all the pubs, did not see a single fruit machine. Now, I think we went to six different pubs in Peel, every single one of them had one, two or three random £500 jackpot machines. I did not see a single fruit machine all night. In Douglas here, oh hang on a minute, I'll zoom out a bit. In Douglas here, there was a pub in Douglas that had a donned next level. There was a video on the channel about that. I was walking past there the other day, had a look through the window. That's gone. It's been replaced by a random 500 pounder. And when I'm walking around town, you know, like you do, once you want, once a player, or well, once a player, once an addict, always a player and an addict. So I can't help myself. Whenever I walk past a pub, I'll always have a little eyeball through the window to see what they've got in there. I act, I genuinely can't now think. Now that that Don Next Level has gone to, to be replaced by a random, I'm hard pushed to think of a single pub in Douglas that now has a traditional fruit machine. On the entire Isle of Man, and you have got a few other towns, you've got Castletown, you've got Port St. Mary, um, and Port Erin down the south. Peel, Douglas and Ramsey are probably, the, they're the three biggest kind of urban conurbations, if you will. Not, not that they're like metropolises or anything like that, but across the entire pub inventory, if you will, of the Isle of Man, I would be amazed if there are more than five, six, seven fruit machines. And I would certainly be very surprised if there were more than ten across the entire Isle of Man. And I can think back to a time when Ramsey alone, we're not a big town, when Ramsey alone would have maybe 25 plus fruit machines on site in pubs at any given time. And what this says to me 
is that there is still an appetite for machines in pubs. Seems to me that punters in pubs, customers in pubs, they are they do want to have a machine to play. It you know it's a very very traditional thing. The change from the round into the fruit machine, or some people just like to have a bit of a gamble. That market is still there. These machines would not be on site having their licenses paid on them if they weren't making money. A single pub would not have three random £500 jackpot machines, all of which need to have a licence paid for them, if it didn't make economic sense for them to do so. They'd just have two of them, or they'd have one of them, but so many pubs not only double up, but triple up on these £500 jackpot machines. So that tells you that there is still a market for them out there, unlike the market for fruit machines, which has declined and declined and declined to the point now where there are basically none left. Give or take, there's there's none left. Where I think this is going to tie into the UK is once random machines start to gain a foothold, because the thing that really did for the traditional fruit machine on the Isle of Man was twofold. First of all, the traditional fruit machine turned to shit. The jackpots got too big. The steak got too big. We all know how quickly a £70 or a £100 jackpot fruit machine on a £1 play could get through 20 quid. You could lose 20 quid in a minute, not even get a feature, not even got the, on the board. The casual player's kind of... Um, ability to persevere with that kind of nonsense is very very limited but the difference here on the isle of man is that there was an alternative they had the alternative of, of citing these random machines and people very quickly caught on to the fact that they had a fair chance of winning on a random machine so whereas you know, you put 10, 20 pound into a dead fruit machine, you're getting absolutely nowhere. But people understand, put 10, 20, 30 quid into a random machine, they've got as much chance of winning on them as anybody else. So that's the key difference here on the Isle of Man, is that they had an alternative to traditional fruit machines. And I think that once that alternative starts to make itself felt in the pubs in the UK, we're going to, as long as they get them right, as long as they don't absolutely take the piss on the payouts and that kind of thing, I believe that random machines will start to gain traction in the pubs of the UK and that the traditional fruit machine, what's left of it, this, this £100 abomination that is absolutely nothing to do really. It, it, it's an AWP in name only because the amusement has gone. They're just low percentage compensated snooze fests that are a very good way of losing large amounts of money very quickly unless you happen to be one of the very few people who knows what the methods and the tips and the tricks are so i think the isle of man little isle of man here i think is providing an instructive foresight of what is to come for the pubs of the uk and i think it's going to be random machines as long as they put the legs on half decent percentages, the randoms here tend to be set on 92 or 94%, which is not brilliant, but it's okay. As long as they can get the stakes and the prizes and the percentages right, I can see random machines doing the same destructive piece of work that they did on traditional fruit machines here. And frankly, I don't think that would be a bad thing because... For me, there's really nothing left now worth saving of the traditional fruit machine. When we were out in Ramsey the other week, I did have a go on that Swing My Axe, and somebody had obviously forced it out not that long ago. You know how they do it. They flip you up and down that stupid dice entry trail. They keep landing on that forced win square. It's called Slice and Dice on Swing My Axe, the payoff square, whatever you want to call it, and it'll keep throwing two, three, and four pound at you. Once you finally get on the feature, it's not going to offer you more than five quid. I think it cost me 40 pounds. I was prepared to get 40 pound into it. It did offer me the deal or no deal game, which I thought, you know what? I can't be bothered with this. I'm not going to force this out. I just can't be asked. 
So I took the deal or no deal game and it controlled it all the way down. So it never offered me more than a tenner. And then it was £8 in my box at the end of it all. And I just walked away. I thought, you know what? Fuck this. I can't be bothered. These things are just boring. I mean, fair play if you can still make profit on them. If you still have a method, you've still got some tips and tricks and you can make money on them. Fair play to you. Go ahead and do it. But I think that the days now of the traditional fruit machine are numbered. It's been virtually eradicated on the Isle of Man. And I think it's going to go the same way in the United Kingdom. And quite frankly, I would say good riddance to bad rubbish. It's long overdue. I will not mourn the death of the fruit machine. Thank God we have got emulation to remind us of how good and inventive and creative fruit machines used to be and that's how fruit machines will live on for me via the medium of emulation the real things as far as i am concerned can just fuck off and die that's it for this video thank you very much for watching i hope you have enjoyed it and i'll catch up with you next time but for now goodbye